What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we've had early access for the last week on Diablo for Season 6 Vessel of Hatred. So today I'm bringing you an early review of the Undercity endgame activity or, or early game activity that you could do in Diablo for Season 6. So... Everything that you might know for the Undercity, I'm going to add some additions to that. Because this was, you know, everything was under embargo, it's finally lifted. Now I actually get to talk about some of the things with no spoilers and the Undercity itself, which I think is very, very cool. So, let's get into it. So, for those who don't know, the Undercity is a brand new uh, early game mechanic. This is a mechanic where this is going to be a dungeon, which unlocks after level 15. Once you unlock it after level 15 by doing the story quest line, you're going to be able to go in and just farm. Okay, so this is basically kind of like a mini pit in the early game. And this is specifically designed to help you level up your character and target farm some of the items that you need for whatever build you're trying to do for whichever class that you are playing. I do really like this mechanic. I do really think that this was a good thing that they added on to the game. And I do think that it is gonna help overall players, especially you casual Andes, who just wanna really get some levels early on quickly and then just really get some very, very good gear. Now, during the early access, the rewards were, you know, just okay. So uh, hopefully that we, you know, when their campfire stream comes for season six, we'll get some news and information on if those are gonna be buffed, but it seems pretty good. I mean, they're not bad. I just wish it could be a little bit better. Okay, so hopefully we'll get a buff on that. So the Undercity, it unlocks at level 15. You can start doing it when you go through the story quest line and then you can start farming this dungeon. So how does this dungeon work and what can you do with it? So once you're on the map here, let's go over. So you're in a Karast here at the Karast Bazaar. You're going to come over to the Spirit Bracer here. And this is going to be the thing that allows you to access the Undercity. Okay, so once you click it, you're going to be able to go in and just utilize the portal. So you can see here that the Undercity uh, is designed to give you an uh, or Undercity or enhance its reward potential. Tributes to find additional reward upgrades and run difficulty. And bargains may further customize your rewards. So reward upgrades are enhanced loot, the starting time, no time penalty bonus, and no potion drop penalty. So over here, you're going to be able to get some additional tributes that you can add on to this to kind of change how the dungeon is not only going to work, the monster type, and what kind of rewards that you're actually going to get. You unlock this stuff later on in the game, um, which is kind of interesting. And then you can also bargain after that. So once you get those things, you come in and bargain. I don't have any right now to actually show you, but it is pretty cool. I've seen this with some of the other creators, so I think this is really, really nice. Now, once you go into the portal, because the quest line is going to give you a few ch chances to go through this, so you can unlock it, and then you can do whatever you want. So as you can see here, when you, we open up the portal, we're going to run the Crass Undercity, and it's very, very cool. Now, this is going to power level you very, very quickly, okay? It just felt like you were getting so much XP. So once you go in, the Undercity is, you're going to see a couple things here. We're going to have a timer. We have one to three floors. So this is similar to how the pit actually works. Then you're gonna see that you have this bar here. This bar has a couple different numerals. We got one through four. So the reward upgrades are zero to four. So as you're killing monsters, and then as you are unlocking these braziers here, this is how you're going to upgrade your rewards for the end of it, okay? The attunement ignites beacons and slays monsters. That's what contributes to your attunement bar here. So the more monsters that you kill, the more mo the more attunement that you get, so you can max this out. Now our time bonus is slaying afflicted monsters. So not every single monster that you kill is going to give you time. So if we go back to our map here, you can see that there's some monsters here that have time, however, there is additional monsters and elites that you find that have a kind of orange aura, which I'm going to show you in a minute. They have an orange aura, okay? And this orange aura is a indication that this is a monster that can add additional time. Now, why isn't my timer going down? So as you're doing this, the timer is gonna go down. If you reach zero, you're done. 
each time you kill a monster with the the time bonus it adds to your time so this circle is a preventative circle so i can sit here and not do anything okay it's not going to change my time as soon as i exit is when the timer is going to start to go so i'm going to go through i'm just going to fight these monsters real quick just so you guys can see and you can see my attunement drops on the ground and i start getting some okay now let's go down here so you can see how these guys look so you can see that this afflicted has this orange kind of glow around it and it's what the monsters that's how you know the monsters actually have the time bonus on them again let's go over here you can see this orange aura around the monster okay this orange aura which indicates a timer and then you see plus eight seconds okay and then you can see my timer is just going down unless i kill everything now i am going to show some additional gameplay just so you guys can see it but as you're going through the the dungeon okay once you get to the end once you get to the last floor and you complete it at the end as you can see it with the gameplay in the background that the timer stops when you reach the boss there will no longer be a concern about the 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 timer you get to sit there until you defeat the boss and once you defeat the boss is when you're going to get all of your rewards okay you're gonna have a couple different boxes here you should just have one you got your stash if you happen to find the a teleporting goblin that's in here that will give you an additional box which i'll highlight here on the screen so getting to the boss is fairly easy i never have gone through the undercity in my time testing it and never ran out of time and i never like didn't reach the boss and i never was able to not beat the boss the undercity is designed to lo start leveling you from 15 going up and it's it's it, it's a design to help give you this gear to help kind of give you that power creep as you're advancing through the different difficulties in the game so there was never a time and that was with adjusting so i did it all the way up to penitence i haven't done a full playthrough in torment one but i'm assuming that through the first levels you know up to penitent is really where you want to be at for the undercity because i think once you get to torment one and you start doing the end game you have more important things to do like the pit for your glyphs you got nightmare dungeons to get your masterwork materials then you got to start farming bosses and you got all this other stuff to really do and then of course you got the brand new dark citadel so the undercity i think is really great for the first four difficulties and power leveling your character that way to really get some really good gear now just like the pit the Undercity does not drop any items, or it rarely drops items as you're progressing through each of the dungeons, okay? Or each of the floors, excuse me. Once you get to the end is where you're gonna get all your loot, which that's why I say kind of similar to the Pit or the Infernal Horde, that I hope that the rewards for the Undercity really get buffed, especially considering that it's designed for the lower level players or the lower level that you are before you get to 60 in the end game. So I don't think that you're really going to be using it too much like past 50 or maybe 45 because there's probably going to be other ways to really benefit from the other um, game modes in the game, like doing Hell Tides or like doing Nightmare Dungeons, even at the lower levels, um, those kind of things. So I think that the Undercity is just great to like 45, maybe 50. So I hope that the rewards really give us a nice boost and the targeting is very good for when we can actually go through this in the early stages. So let's talk about the negatives to the undercity one is kind of quest locked okay you got to get you got to do the quest which again once you do it the first time through as the expansion releases then you'll never have to uh, go through because you can skip the campaign and you'll have it unlocked so it is quest locked which is kind of a bummer or at least it, it that's what it was in the early testing uh next is that it's just uh it, it's kind it's very easy not to say that it's it needs to be very difficult because you're such low level you want to be able to get through it but i hope that there's not an imbalance with difficulty to rewards otherwise the rewards are probably the only other thing where it's kind of it seems a little underwhelming and it doesn't seem like you're getting enough for the time investment going through all three floors clearing each and every single floor to make sure you don't run out of time make sure you kill you know all of the monsters and the elites so that way you can maximize your rewards right because you don't want to finish the uh the undercity killing the boss with like only level two out of four rewards you definitely want to max that so it is very time consuming so i hope that the rewards really 
really give us, you know, get, give us our return, our back on doing that kind of content. You know, because when you're lower level, you're not going to have a whole lot of powers unless you go get some from particular dungeons. And you're not really going to have a whole lot of very good gear, if any powers at all. So doing them at, you know, 15 to 20, you're not going to have a whole lot. So I hope that the rewards really help give us a big bump. Uh, but those are the only two negatives, guys. I really think that the Undercity is a very good mechanic. I think it's great early on. I think it's great for leveling your character and getting particular gear. And I think it's just a very cool game mode to add. I will say, since I made it to the end game, though, I've never returned to the Undercity. So there's going to be that to think about. But I think, again, for your casual Andes, that is probably just fine to level. Um, or if you want to do alternate characters, it's probably great for that, too. So again, guys, this is the other city, my review. I think it's a, it's a very nice addition to the early stages of the game, to the leveling aspect of the game, especially with certain classes that struggle to level or not struggle, but are just a little bit more difficult to level or at least the flow of their leveling pace. Uh, this is talking to like the barbarian or the druid until you really start to get a couple things, then you can pop off. So yeah. Again, guys, this is The Undercity. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think and how excited are you to actually play it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.